Hello everybody, welcome to my Game of the Year video. If you don't know me, my name's Ian Higton and my Game of the Years are always a little bit weird. I never really pick the big AAA games. I always go a little bit off the wall. And this year is no different because this year, instead of picking one Game of the Year, I'm basically picking a genre of the year. So it's still G-O-T-Y but it's genre instead of game. And is it a real genre or is it one I've just made up? I don't know, but I'm picking social games. So there's been plenty of your standard games that I've enjoyed this year. Big shout out to The Last of Us 2, which was absolutely fantastic. Final Fantasy VII Reboot, my very first time playing a Final Fantasy game. Made it all the way through that, loved it. Demon's Souls. Demon's Souls was the very first Souls game that I actually got on with and felt like I couldn't get enough of. That was amazing. Great introduction to Next Gen as well. I loved Teardown, which is like basically Minecraft burglary simulator where you just have to destroy everything. And uh, of course, Half-Life Alex as well on VR, which was absolutely stunning and um, one of the best uses of VR technology I've ever played. So yeah, those games were fantastic, but this year was the year of the lockdown. COVID-19 came, it turned the entire world upside down and social games really saved a lot of people, I think. There was a lot of people locked away, not being able to do anything, feeling very, very lonely. I was one of them. My family and my friends are all over the place and every weekend, normally, I'd go and visit them. Uh, but yeah, suddenly, lockdown central, couldn't go anywhere. And everyone was doing Zoom quizzes and, you know, Zoom chats and Zoom birthday parties and things. But after a while, Zoom started to do my head in. Um, I couldn't be bothered with weekly Zoom chats anymore. Just say, oh, so uh, what did you do this week? Oh, nothing. I didn't do anything. What did you do this week? Oh, I also did nothing. It's just, I'm sure you all had the same kind of thing. It just felt like forced conversation. But then social games appeared. Now, what do I mean by social games? Well, I mean games where you can play with a lot of your friends. So one of the first ones, that appeared uh, for me was Warzone. I played that so much uh, when it first came out, so much that I'm a little bit burnt out by it now, but uh, me and my friends, we played it all the time. I played it on stream, I played it off stream, I played it way too late into the night, I sometimes played it on my lunch breaks. Absolutely loved it because it got me chatting to my friends the natural progressor from the Zoom quizzes, though, was Jackbox Party Pack. Jackbox Party Pack 2, 3 and 6, I think we played a lot of. We played a lot of the Murder House. There's a, there's a murdery one. And we also played a lot of Quiplash. Quiplash is, uh, if you've never played it before, Quiplash is worth playing. You can be very, very rude if you want to be. And it's absolutely hilarious. So that was great. That was kind of like the replacement for Zoom chats. But then a whole host of other social type games came out, starting with Animal Crossing. Now, Animal Crossing seems like it may be a bit of a single player game. It has online functionality, but for me, it really, really opened up a world of possibilities because if you watch this channel, I started doing a hell of a lot of Animal Crossing videos. So in my list videos, I created a town called Swindon, which I wanted to be the most disgusting, rubbish-filled stink pit in the entire Animal Crossing Kingdom. Everyone's Animal Crossing islands are so pretty, I wanted mine to be a piece of shit, just like Swindon. And it turned out to be exactly that. Then, on the back of that, I started streaming Animal Crossing on my personal YouTube channel. And what I did was I became Animal Crossing's trash man, the grandmaster trash. So I'd get a, a bunch of dodo codes, I'd fly to an island, I'd collect all the rubbish first, then I'd do a tour and I'd explore everyone's wonderful creations and see their houses. It was so nice to just take the time to meet each person individually and see the creativity that lived inside them come to life in Animal Crossing. And 
In turn, that burst one of my most memorable social moments uh, for me, which was during one of those Platform 32 live streams, when one of our regular viewers, Liam, created a virtual Animal Crossing version of EGX. And the coolest thing was, I turned up to his island and I was surprised by going into the meet and greet area that he built by six or seven other viewers queuing up in the meet and greet area, just like they would do a real EGX. It was so, so wonderful. So big thanks to Liam for making that. And a big thanks to everyone who joined in and, and queued up and was there for the big reveal and watching the stream. It was super memorable. It was really cool. It gave me a little bit of that meet and greet EGX vibe that was missing this year because there were obviously no EGXs. And uh, yeah, it was just a wonderful, wonderful little experience. So I've already talked a little bit about Warzone, but the other big battle royale experience this year that was amazing for social lols was uh, of course Fall Guys. Fall Guys kind of came out of nowhere. I, I'd been getting press releases for it for a while, but um, it really, when it finally released, um, I think because of a beta, they basically gave everybody in the world beta codes and uh, everyone played it and laughed their asses off. And so from then on, it basically hit the ground running and it was all anybody could talk about for a few months. And so I was playing that on stream with Ethan and Zoe. I was playing it on Platform 32. I was playing it with my friends. It is another example of just a game where you can get a group of people together. And you don't have to concentrate too much. Occasionally you'll have to do a little bit of concentrating, but most of the time, you can just shoot the shit, have a laugh, have a chat, and feel like you're hanging out with mates. And that's all That's all a lot of us wanted in, uh, in lockdown. Now the next example of a social game for me is actually my game of the year from a couple of years ago. It's PUBG. I played PUBG to death, just like Warzone. I kind of burnt out on it. But recently, they brought custom lobbies to the console. And because of the cross-play nature of the console, I was able to start hosting Friday night custom PUBG lobbies where members of the Platform 32 and Eurogamer community would come together and we would just have private battle royales. It would just be me, my friends, the Platform 32 Eurogamer community, all going at it together, just having an absolute laugh, shooting each other. This one really did for me encapsulate not only kind of like a meet and greet um, community vibe but it also had the hanging out with my mates at a pub kind of vibe i've been doing that for a, a fair few months now so again um, an excellent social game that just you know the, the game doesn't matter really as much as the hanging out with your friends so another tick on the box for social games not awesome one pubg Another game I have to mention, which is just on the cusp of social games, in my opinion, is Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia is a fantastic, fantastic horror game. It's so scary, but it, it, it encapsulates that kind of vibe of going to, I don't know, a theme park Halloween horror night or going to the cinema to see a scary movie with your friends and when something makes you jump, you're like, oh, hee ha oh, lols, with each other. Uh, that you can play with up to four, um, four people, so you and three friends. And again, there's a lot of wandering around, there's a lot of chatting, but then when things, when the shit really starts hit to, hitting the fan and things start falling off shelves and a ghost appears in the corner, then it's like hilarity and screaming and you're like, oh my god, oh my god. And it, it's just pure distilled terror with loads of laughs. So Phasmophobia, definite shout out for Phasmophobia. Love playing that game with my friends and making videos for you lot to enjoy as well. It's it's easy to be silly in it. It's easy to be scared in it. It's a really, really good game. And it's made, uh, you know, by like, I think one person, like just a random indie game that came out of nowhere uh, and was just successful because at the time people wanted to watch other people hanging out and having fun like normal, I guess. And um, talking about uh, small indie games coming from out of nowhere, 
One of the biggest social games of the year is, of course, Among Us. I play it a lot off stream with um, a different set of friends to who I play games with normally. So we normally get like eight or nine people on a Saturday or Sunday playing Among Us. We have a few drinks again. We have loads of laughs. I, who knew that backstabbing your friends could be so much fun? Um, it's genius, and we've obviously done some really cool social style streams uh, with that game on Eurogamer as well, because we brought in the three stream viewathon with Outside Xbox, Outside Extra, uh, Dicebreaker as well, and that is that is just a pleasure to do. Um, I love how much all of you lot like, like watching it. We love making them too. They are uh, they're just a great great way to just hang out and have a laugh and it, it's all nice clean fun until someone gets pushed out of an airlock or my door knocks bit of a weird delivery that i seem to have been sent a load of things from the star wars celebration store uh, including these yoda ears and whatever the fuck this is so uh thanks star wars now, obviously, those titles weren't the extent of all the social games that released in 2020. There were loads more that I enjoyed playing. Shout outs to Grounded, to Surgeon Simulator 2, uh, to Little Hope. They're all games I loved playing with uh, Aoife and Zoe. And uh, Telling Lies as well. Really enjoyed Telling Lies. Not sure if that came out this year or not, but I played it this year with Aoife. But yeah, just games that allowed me to chat with my friends call of duty multiplayers and things like that old school stuff they rely a lot more on twitch action and you know just constant shooting and you get battle royale type games or games like among us and things that just allow you these moments of chat these moments of laughter before something kicks off that then sparks a brand new conversation um so yeah three cheers to social games for saving 2020, bringing all of us as a video gaming community closer together, introducing people to video gaming as well. I know a lot of people who have been like, oh, I don't play games, who now love Among Us. So, you know, social games, please keep happening. Indie developers, please keep, you know, surprising us with these magical social games that AAA studios would be too scared to try out. And just, yeah, keep us entertained in 2021 because you know i don't think we're out of the woods just yet and um we're gonna need a lot more social games to keep us sane until uh things completely calm down but yeah once again thank you so much to the entire eurogamer community to everyone watching this to the platform 32 community as well you lot um by joining in on the streams by watching them by playing uh with me uh you lot have helped me through lockdown as much as our content has hopefully helped you through lockdown as well so yeah thank you so much um here's to social games best genre of the year 2020 we'll keep on keeping you entertained with videos all the way through up until new year and beyond into 2021 so stay with us do like do subscribe and do continue having an excellent christmas and a happy new year. Goodbye and good socials. Now, what are you? What exactly are you? Are you like a pillow?